1841 six pound smoothbore field gun. Everyone say hi, model 1841 six pound smoothbore field gun. Hi. Hi. 1841 field gun. Got it. Very long name. So much so that even the soldier stationed here over 130 years ago would very rarely call it that long title. They're often just going to call it their six pounder. Now, I assure you, it does not weigh six pounds. The barrel alone weighs over 900. What do you think does weigh six pounds with the gun? Any guesses? Cannonball. The cannonball, exactly. This cannon could lob a six pound cast iron cannonball up to a mile away. That's much of the edges of Round Island out there. At that mile long distance, we could probably hit a tree on Round Island. What tree, I couldn't tell you. So that being said, it's not that accurate that range. That is because it's a smooth bore. So inside the barrel, there are no groups of rifling inside. So there's no twist being put in the ball. So it's really going to go any direction to last bounce. I'm not going to ask you guys another sit on the ledge. I appreciate it. So much your ball. Thank you. All right, but like I said, it's not all that accurate. It's more accurate range is more of a half mile mark. But they just don't break well out there where those ferries are going. And no, we're not going to sink a ferry. We're going to step 10 times a day, just no. But at that distance, you can well defend the harbor and the village of Mackinac down below, which is really what Fort Mackinac was designed to do. But you see, that's for its early years. But me and Tristan are representing soldiers of the 1880s. And by then, there's no threat to Fort Mackinac. So the only reason that we'll have this cannon is for ceremonial purposes. They'll be firing what are called salute shots. Just a little bit of gunpowder with no balls and get a bang off to celebrate things like a firework. And they'd fire for anything really. Just say like raising and lowering the flag, bit special visitor of the island, first but a tourist after a long winter, or especially federal holidays. Basically any reason you'd find a fire can because well, even back then firing cans was cool. It's a good reason to do it. That's exactly what I'm gonna do here today. Five single salute shots on it, all your trips here. How's that sound? Awesome. Alrighty. Step back here, put this leather thumb patch on my thumb, and cover this touch hole. This is called thumb stalling. I'm not letting any air into the chamber of this can to cause the smoke of embers, make it a lot safer for Tristan to visit this end. Now, Tristan's going to take our first tool, the gunner's worm. Basically, of course, to a stick, he's going to search the piece. He's looking for any debris from the last shot that could be harboring those embers. Now, if he finds anything today, it's going to be some historically inaccurate aluminum foil. <laughs> the reason we use aluminum foil, those are stroke being accurate, it's a lot safer, burns up quicker. Historically, you draft your charge of cloth with cloth smolders. And we don't want to fire a smolder cloth in a market park. Alright, next up we'll take the wet swab, basically a dirty wet sponge and a stick. You'll dip that into a bucket of water lightly, then run that down the barrel as well. This is going to do several things. It'll cool the barrel down, clean it out, douse sparks, but also, we're pushing all the air out because of my thumb stalling, creating a vacuum. I'm going to pull it out. Made of a small thunk. Basically, we created a vacuum, pushed all the air out. There should be no live sparks to base of this cannon. So it should be safe to load our charge. Now, our charge today, I'm not going to lie, it's a little small. It's about four ounces of black powder. To actually shoot a cannonball, you need about 20 ounces. That's about the size of a Pringles can of gunpowder. But even for the 1880s, they used 10 ounces for a sloop charge. The reason we can't use 10 ounces is because it scares the crud out of horses, it rattles, rattles windows, and it'll actually knock paintings off the wall of the army museum, and we don't want that. So we'll give you just four. Alright, now we move into our last step, timing the piece. It's actually going to set this cannon off. So Tristan's going to take a brass spike called a gimlet, run that down the touch hole, poking a hole in our charge, revealing that gunpowder. Now what's going to set it off is our ignition device today. And our ignition device today is the invention of the 1840s. This would have been used during the Mexican-American War and the Civil War. It's called a friction primer. It's a little hollow brass tube filled with gunpowder. And the tip is a chemical called fulminate and mercury. It's very sensitive. And it's also very similar to what they put in cap guns. So when you pull a pin, it'll create a spark, sending a jet of flame down the tube and now your main charge. All right, now it is this time I droop to remind you all, even though it's a small charge, it is a cannon, it will be loud. So if you want to cover your ears now, or get your cameras ready, you have your priorities live. How could I do that? Alrighty. And with that, we have two commands to fire the cannon. And they are ready. Fire! And there you have it a spin shot of the unit for Mackinac. We have plenty more going on today. Next demonstration will be a rifle firing down to the Prague. It's about 15 minutes. Hope to see you there. But if not, have a wonderful day today, folks.